I'm actually having to run the air conditioner in the Tarvis. <laughs> Welcome to Florida. Well, good evening, Blue Troopers. Uh, special bonus tonight. You're going to have a bunch of outtakes because I decided to shoot one out here in the Tarvis tonight. And as having my legitimate evening post dinner coffee with it, and it's every time I start to talk, it would uh, loosen things up. So you're going to hear a lot of comments about that in the outtakes. Also, just I finally got my rhythm going. The battery and the camera died. And I, I'll have some of those outtakes there too. But it's one of those things that uh, sometimes you just have a little trouble kickstarting the motorcycle. And I had to change my camera angle because this way the camera uh, recharger can, can reach the plug. Hey, you know, my welcome to Max's Models, lowest production values on the internet and proud of it. So, um, to reiterate what I was talking about earlier, I'm just going to start the whole thing over again. You may hear some of this again in the outtakes. I got uh, the Galaxy Quest NSEA protector finished. Now, because I didn't read the painting guide correctly, I wound up having to mask a bunch of stuff that I could have pre-painted and put on there. Really, the kit only has one area that has to be masked off near the front of the, uh, I guess you would call them Broussard collectors, the engine intakes. Everything else that's a different color, except for a little trim on the, on the edge of the command deck, can be pre-painted before it goes on and saves you a lot of masking. Unfortunately, the real problem, and by the way, I had to, I had to repaint some of these things two times because I was like, nah, it's too dark now, that's till you finally got it right. Uh, I found one problem though, and that was that the decals were, uh, I guess they were a little old and they were very brittle, but I got them on. However, a couple of them just flaked off. So I clear coated it in pearl today and, and they should, what's left of them should stay on. It looks good from one side, which will obviously be the display side, but the other side, it's got some gaps in them and some chunks missing. And I told my wife, oh, we can just, you know, put some burn marks there and say that's where Saris's ship damaged it during the battle. She's like, nah, just save it, from, just do it from the other side. Don't want to risk you damaging it again at this point, which is a fair concern. The stand, I had a, I didn't like that dark gray blue that was on it. It wasn't, it was, we needed something brighter. So I went to Hurricane Hobby today where Ian had just gotten in a, a stack of new car models, mostly NASCAR stuff. And uh, I looked at a couple of different paints and called my wife, showed her, hey, here's, here's the options. We, we selected one and brought it home, reshot the stand. Now she's going to, the model is done, but she's going to detail out the stand. I've always had trouble doing a good job on detailing those imprinted stands. I, you know, unless you just want to mask the whole thing off, which is a lot of work. But I don't know most folks just use a pen or something. And uh, she's going she's gonna to do the highlights on it. Um, so, and by the way, if you're hearing noises, the Tarvis just backs up against the road, so you may hear cars and motorcycles going by. Um, so, uh, basically, I'm considering that kit done. As well as the Boeing uh, from Atlantis, the 2707, uh, I got it clear coated today. It's up on the shelf, uh, and it actually, I'm happy enough with it that it's going up uh, in the house. And it's small, and I've got to pose the wing swept back because I just think that looks cooler. So it uh, really doesn't take up much self space. It sneaks in there. The one thing about it was the stand was just a little tricky because it goes in the back of the engines. So I glued it in there and, and posed it upside down So because the model tends to want to sag and now it's, it's uh, glued in the position I want it in. So those two are done. Got to work on the A7, the Corsair 2, the slough. Short, logo, short little ugly fellow. Um, and of course that's the sanitized version. It is typical monogram kit of that era. Really brings me back, you know, to your childhood. The parts fit okay. Um, there is a bit of a gap that has to be sealed up in various spots, and especially behind the uh, aft of the canopy where it makes the fuselage. Because this kit's really designed for the canopy to be posed open, and if you're going to pose it shut, depending on how particularly you want to get about it, you may want to put a piece of filler or something in there. But uh, I got also. <laughs> The uh, jet exhaust is, of course, just one piece that go before the ship, before the two halves go together. You, you, you glue it in, and it sits there, and you know you bring the other half in. Well, it's got a little notch to line it up, but um, it, it, when it dried, it sagged a little bit, was was out of place, and this is after the fuselage halves have hardened. And I decided to go ahead and try to straighten it up, and of course, broke the glue bond, and I had to reach in there 
with you shake it around, get in there with tweezers and everything, and finally uh, by using the little paint grabbers held in place long enough to use the hypodermic to drop some thin glue in there and re and just hold it that way and rebond it. And it seems to be okay in place now. But uh, you know, anytime you try to move something once the, the glue's hardened, you know, you, there's very little chance you can do anything other than snap it out of place. But uh, it was, it had really gotten lopsided. It was noticeable. Now it's okay. The cockpit doesn't have a lot of detail, but it's enough. It goes, it comes with a pilot figure. It has a glue on arm. I couldn't find it. So I had just uh, used putty to, to kind of fill in that area. This is one ironically that although there's not a lot of detail, there's no instrument panel uh, decal or anything, and there's not a lot of, you know, there's just a little bit of detail, enough. Then you have the control stick and the ejection seat, but it's funny because this actually has a big canopy that you will be able to see the inside uh, fairly well. <laughs> so, uh, but then again, it's typical model that era, and everything's going together without argument. I've pre-painted the top of the wings and the bottom of the wings, and I'm just going to set those aside. And I'll, you know, uh, I actually, went ahead and painted them with the uh, couple of the racks already glued into place, working out a lot easier that way. Hey, this one will be a wheels down. I did not put a weight in the nose. It was kind of an oversight on my part. I should have gotten a couple of slugs because that thing will probably sit on its tail, but it sits so low naturally that you can probably just put a little glass rod under there that nobody's really going to notice. And uh, that's uh, the progress I've got on that. I've got the canopy uh, masked off and clear coated. I will probably paint the fuselage on this one. The, I've already done the wings and the tail, uh, horizontal stabilizers. I'll probably pre-paint all that before I put the wings on, just to be easier to get in. You know, it's a fairly straightforward paint scheme. And then uh, when it's done, I'll put the wings on and maybe just, you know, a little uh, clear, clean up the seams and then just have to paint that little area. Um, I, I'm always looking for strategies to make the painting easier. Sometimes it's easier to pre-paint and sometimes it gets in your way. These Douglas World Cruisers, I actually, you have almost have to pre-paint them, but uh, I'm not entirely sure the way the, the paint kept interfering with the glue because it's 172 scale and everything's so small. I'm not sure next time, I mean, I would paint the tops of the wings and the tails and everything and, and the silver part of the fuselage, but I'm not entirely sure that I wouldn't uh, just leave the, where the wings and everything mount, leave that unpainted and with the struts until they were in. Uh, maybe the same for the floats. Uh, probably made, my, made life a little harder on myself trying to make it easier. I've got them here in the TARDIS. I'm repurposing the old uh, diorama base that was destroyed in the crash of 23. And uh, they still a long way to go on these, but the grunt work is over. I'm focusing on the Vietnam builds now. And once uh, I did my you know insurance build to make sure I had one, that was a T28. Once I'm done with the uh, uh, slough. I'm thinking about the uh, F-100 and the B-52 because these uh, Tamiya Sky Raiders are going to be a lot more work and uh, I don't want to rush those little nice kits. I also have the monogram one. Of course I've got the uh, Ravel 1140 right here. I'm going to, if I want those gears working, I'm going to just have to fabricate those parts. I, I bumped into Brett over Hurricane Hobbies when I went to, went to get the paint for the base and uh, there's uh, just no, and he said, are you gonna fabricate the part, of course, for him, because he's so good at this stuff, you know, fabricating a chunk of plastic in this complex three-dimensional part, it's kind of like, yeah, what's the big deal? I'm kind of like, mm -hmm, limited skill here, you know, no depth perception. But um, anyway, uh, don't people who make it look too easy, this just, uh. um, so anyway, uh, that's mostly what I got done today, and uh, I have all kinds of things I want to do. Big plans, big, big plans. Probably after the Vietnam build, I am going to focus on um, the completing everything that I've got. I, I like having multiple builds on because, you know, you paint something, you got to wait a couple hours for it to harden before you can start playing with it again. So you're like, okay, well, well, let's go work on this one, which is why I built this. I'd have all these different workstations. But then you wind up going, you're going to see one, two, three, four, five, six. has six projects going here, uh, not including the slough, which is the primary build. So uh, sometimes you kind of get a little carried away. I almost started on that uh, Red Star Yak that was sent to me. I was like, because I want to I 
do a history video on Red Star models, uh, which by the way is out of England, uh, not out of uh, Russia. And uh, thanks to Paul Adams again, our friend Paul Adams down in New Zealand, I have enough information uh, to get started on that. Small company and uh, and it's definitely woven into other British model companies. Its history is not standalone. So that's where we're at with all of that. I might get out a morning video, but I leave tomorrow afternoon to go to work. And like I say, hopefully back in time for the live stream. A few days off and then um, just, well, a lot, a, lot, a lot of work coming up in February, a lot more. I had a lot of time off this month, so I've gotten as much done as I have. And that's been great. I've been having a great time. Um, I don't think I'm one of those people who's going to have any trouble with retirement. I want to get started on the F4 Phantom here, but as you know, this is a, a very detailed 148 scale kit, and it's just, it's an Edward, so again, a nice kit that you really want to take your time with, get all the colors right. and. That's where we are at with everything tonight. So guys, I will uh, let you go for this evening with uh, one parting thought. Somebody sent me uh, a video, actually it was my brother sent me a video of the Nautilus that tried to go under the North Pole and no, not that one. There was one back in the uh, early 30s that tried of using a, not derelict, but uh, shall we say, uh, near end of service life borrowed uh, American submarine. And uh, it's a, they're, they're, that's a scary story, but it'd make a great kit bash for somebody who's got the chops to do it. Anyway, uh, that's where we're at for tonight. Guys, take care of yourselves. And as always, model one. enjoy the outtakes. You, you may not want to watch them. I'm, <clears throat> I talk a lot about, <clears throat> you know, so. I am the pilot of the airplane. I am the pilot of the airplane. Of Maxis Models, where I'm about to edit out a cough. <clears throat> Well, hello, Blue Troopers. Max and Max's models are <coughs> really loosens everything up. We're going to have some outtakes tonight. <coughs> really loosens the phlegm. Phlegm. Well, hello, Blue Troopers. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Max and Max's models. And if you don't know, why are you here? And yes, I am actually having my real afternoon coffee. Actually, it's a post-dinner evening coffee, but... And uh, there are going to be some cuts and edits in this because as I drink the coffee, it's uh, loosening everything up. <coughs> All right. Take nine. Beep. This is designed really to be displayed with the canopy open, although, of course, you can close it. Mm-hmm. <clears throat>